Hello, I'm Dr. Russell Dawn, president of Concordia University Chicago. Thank you for tuning in to today's Cougar Athletics broadcast. We take great pride in the strength of both our athletic and academic programs, which are rooted in our steadfast commitment to Jesus Christ. Dedicated to the liberal arts as a foundation of a high quality college degree, we believe education should form individuals for service to their neighbors. This makes Concordia Chicago an exciting and fulfilling place to study, work, learn, and grow. Learn more today by visiting cuchicago.edu. Thank you, and go Cougars!
Welcome back to the Cougar Sports Network, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us here for game two of today's Northern Athletic Collegiate Conference doubleheader matchup between the Cougars of Concordia University Chicago and the Stars of Dominican University. Cougars coming off of a monster win here. I'm Kayla McLeod, joined by Assistant Director of Athletic Communications, Sydney Pulaskis Laher, as we get underway here. A fantastic outing earlier for the Cougars. Picking up a walk-off win in seven innings. New arm here getting his first collegiate start for the Cougars, Sam Gordon. Sam Gordon coming out. This is his first game for the Cougars as in his freshman campaign. Freshman out of Orlando, Florida. So for him, this is going to be a huge moment for him. Obviously, home opener or not home opener, excuse me, but his first game in the Thunderdome. As Phillips gets things going for the Stars with a leadoff single, finding the gap out in left center. So Stars starting starting things off on a high note here, seeing, um, seeing some similar trends from game one here. Very similar lineups for both squads. Number 34, Zach Heline, batting second, just as he did in game one of today's doubleheader. He did a lot of damage as well in that game. So we'll see what he's able to do here with the freshman arm in the circle for the Cougars. A little bit of a matchup here as Sam Gordon drops that one in for strike one. The Division Street rivalry, as we like to say, Dominican University, just down the street from Concordia. Two colleges in the same conference right by each other as Mahler keeps that in front of him, but Phillips is going to be able to still make his way to second. And now we've got a runner in scoring position for the Stars. And last game, the Stars came out hot in the first two innings offensively. So looking to see if they're going to go for a similar approach or if last games, you know, the, the telltale signs of after last games comes back for them in this one. Wind was a big factor in game one. We saw a lot of home runs coming from that wind blowing straight out. So... Something that's still very possible here as the wind is still still blowing here. But Sam Gordon picking up his first career strike out in the maroon and gold. Welcome to the Thunderdome, Sam Gordon. Cougars quickly with one out here. Betty third. The third baseman, number 15, Nico Kretsu. Nico Kretsu coming up to bat now for the Stars. 302 batting average on the year without last game's statistics played into that. As he drops that one into left field for a base hit, Kahigas a great job at keeping that in front of him and getting that ball in quickly to stop Phillips at third. Runners now on the corners here. Bringing up number 22. Quentin Schwartz, we saw him come in during that first game. Didn't didn't start for the Stars in that first game, but saw him come in, I believe it was the fifth or sixth inning, and staying in this lineup for the Stars. 0 for 1 in that first game. But, again, he's one of the most consistent hitters in this lineup. Right now he's appeared in 14 games with 12 starts. He's got 10 hits to his name, 8 RBIs. So he's had some experience at the plate in – at this point, he gets the start right now after the last game's uh, start off. The junior from McHenry, Illinois, holding strong here. As Gordon gets ready to deliver. Gets the swinging strike there. As 
Strike three for Sam Gordon. Two outs now for the Cougars, both at the hands of Gordon. For a first time out on the mound, especially, again, first time in, in your home field as a collegiate athlete and his first time out at all Eight, as a collegiate seven. athlete, that's Correct. a great Number way to start nine, with two strikeouts. Gordon looks calm and collected on the mound, just doing what he's got to do, keeping his composure, knowing that this is a very – Fast-paced Dominican team. They're they're swinging the bats well. They're not afraid to make the pitchers work. And Gordon doing a great job at, at keeping control of this count and of this game so far. Oh, one count here. Runners on first and third. Two outs. That one. Low for ball one. And just like in the last game, these pitchers and hitters alike are going to be trying to establish where the strike zone is at. So Gordon already with two strikeouts is starting to get a pretty good idea of where this umpire is looking for the ball to be thrown. And the hitters being able to foul off pitches and make those adjustments so that they're able to get the pitch that they want to hit rather than get called strike three for the out. So a one-two count now for Sam Gordon here. As that one is fouled back, Kalika's keeping this at-bat alive. Gordon already picked up two swinging strikeouts, looking to make it three here to close the first inning. As he does... Three swinging strikeouts for Sam Gordon. It does not get better than that for your first inning pitch as a freshman. What a way to close it. Cougars heading behind the bats now, holding the stars to no runs off of one hit. Two hits, excuse me. Cougars coming, coming their way in just a few minutes on the Cougar Sports Network. Our name's Richard. Hey Cougar fans, thank you for tuning in to today's game. For more information on the baseball program, head to cucougars.com. We hope to see you in our next game. Roll Cougs! Back here on the Cougars Sports Network. Bottom of the first, Cougars have the chance to strike first. Julio Cajigas at the plate, leading things off for the CUC squad. That one is delivered high. On the mound for the Stars right now is number 26, Chris Kenziora, 9.92 ERA. He's got a win and two losses to his name, four appearances, 16.1 innings pitch, a 15 walk to nine strike ratio. So, Somebody who's thrown a good amount of innings for the Stars. 
getting the start right now in game two. Cahigas looking to get things going here as he takes a hack at that, and it's going to drop fair. Oh, foul. Oh, my goodness. That was right on the line. A very close call. Found a great little gap there. Maybe another, another two inches to the left, and that would have been a well-placed ball. I for think, I think the Stars just had a moment of like an exhale of relief because that ball, the way, the way it dropped and where it was placed, that would have at least been a double, maybe even a triple for Cahigas. Absolutely, especially with his speed and his ability to run the bases. But he takes that one low for ball two. Swings through and picks up strike number three, bringing up Tyler Dorsch to the plate for the Cougars. Dorsch in the first game today. Two for three at the plate, one RBI. A pretty consistent hitter for this Cougar squad. Yeah, like you mentioned, Dorsch also had a ball out of the yard today as well. So he's been feeling it this afternoon. Right now, it looks like, oh. That ball misses outside for ball two. Dorsch, a very consistent hitter for this Cougar squad. Like Sydney mentioned, already hit one over the fence today. Fouls that one back. But first Cougar to hit a home run earlier in the season and then just continue to tack him on and has been a offensive threat for this squad. As that one hits for strike two. Kinsey Ora right now really showing the effectiveness that he's made in the zone so far. Nothing really over the plate, just really painting the corners as much as he possibly can. As that one misses inside for ball three. A full count now here. With the delivery, Dorsch catches a piece of it and is able to sneak it right up the middle. A great placed ball for Dorsch. Does his job, hands it off to the next batter, and Brandon Mahler is coming up to the plate to do his Brandon job Burke. next. Brandon Mahler, one for five. He sends that one back. It is back at the wall and bounces right off the top of it. I thought we were getting another home run here to start, but Brandon Mahler picks up a double right at the wall. A fantastic way to kick off this game. Cougars taking control here. And quickly, two runners in scoring position for Kasich. Kasich coming off of as great of an ending as it gets with a walk-off homer to win the Cougars the first game. So he's already riding some momentum from that as that ball misses for ball one. Kasich, like we mentioned earlier today, especially in game one when we pretty much called that home run that left the park. He is known for his clutch hitting. So having runners in scoring position right now is a perfect opportunity to have Kasek. With one out here, any type of contact is potentially going to score Dorsch as that ball is riding the line. That's going to stay fair. A fantastically placed ball for Michael Kasek. It's rolling into the corner. Dorsch is going to score. Mahler's rounding. He's coming home. 
safely. Mahler gets home, and Kasich picks up a huge double for the Cougars, and two Cougars come home to put the Cougars up 2-0 here. I mean, again, I feel like we keep just calling it for him because that ball, very similar to Kahigas' first ball that he placed down the line uh, to start off his at-bat, but that ball just fair down the first base line and an incredible spot because right fielder out there for Dominican is just so far pulled towards center field that it just was too far away for him to catch up to catch those Cougar runners before they scored. Absolutely. The Cougars are doing a great job of finding these gaps because prior to, prior to Kasich, you were looking at a well-placed ball in right center. So Kalik is out in right field, pinches in towards center a little bit, and then Kasich comes and puts it right down the right field, the right field line. And, I mean, it's just impossible to play that if you're Kalikas out in right field. Crater in game one, three for four, three runs, two RBIs. And he had two home runs for himself in game one. So another Cougar hitter who has just had a fantastic day. And again, we're 2-0 now in the bottom of the first for the Cougars ahead. So another opportunity for him to tack some more on to his name today. With one out here, Crater takes a chop at that and misses. All it takes here is a base hit. A base hit in a well-placed spot can score Kasich. A base hit anywhere potentially just moves Kasich around the bases and hands things over to Jake Mahler, who's on deck here. So it's a, uh, it's a great spot for the Cougars to be in. Crater connects and sends that high into right center. Phillips able to glove it, but like I said, Kasich making his way to third. Bringing up Jake Mahler. Jake Mahler in game one was a perfect three for three, two runs, two RBIs, and a walk. So, again, the consistency of this part of the lineup for the Cougars has been instrumental in their success. And right now we've got Kasich at third base with that heads-up base running to put them in a great position. That ball misses for ball one. That one catches the corner there. And again, we still got Kenzie Ora on the mound for the Stars and now with this 2-0 lead for the Cougars, seeing how he is able to make a difference out there and kind of stop the CUC rally from continuing. I think Concordia is definitely still riding off of that high from that walk-off win from game one. So being able to slow that down, shut it down, because now we're operating in a, in a nine-inning game. So now it's going to be a lot longer than game one was. Mahler connects with that. It's high and shallow, and it's going to get down and score Kasich. A great drop there from Mahler. Picking up another run for the Cougars. Jake Mahler really having himself a fantastic week in today's first game. Mahler went three for three, picking up two RBIs on top of going four for four in yesterday's game and then picking up his first hit here today in game two. So a really, really strong bat to have for the Cougars. Now we have Yashian Boswell up to bat. 0 for three in game one, but he did have a run scored and a walk, which was super huge for him. He's one of the speedier uh, Cougars in this lineup so getting him on base right now would be great to just continue this two out rally continue to get the Cougars on the board and just put more and more pressure on the stars now the stars are trying to work back they're the ones that have a little bit of a hesitation now off after the, that game one win so really putting the pressure on them as Kenziora gets set here and delivers this one just outside for ball one Wind still blowing outwards, dying down a little bit. 
As that one misses for ball two. Two outs here in the bottom of the first. As Boswell connects and drops that one into shallow right center. Mahler is rounding second. Boswell able to get there on a bobble from Phillips. So a fantastic base running there from Mahler. Mahler was already rounding second before that ball was even touched by Phillips. It looks like from Phillips, though, he tried to go for the do or die type of approach onto the ball, but as soon as he put that glove down, it went right underneath him. So instead of that being a single, yeah. it turns into a double for Boswell, giving them an opportunity. Second and third, Nick Rensberger, two outs at the plate, game one. I think this happened two or three times for him. So this is something that Rensberger is familiar at seeing. As that ball is in there for strike one. Like you mentioned, Rensberger, pretty comfortable in these situations. Potentially works even better under this type of pressure when two outs are on the board and you've got runners in scoring position being able to, to find those, those moments and those gaps. I think it's something that he's the guy that you want in that position. Facing an 0-2 count here. Kenzie Orr looking to get the Stars out of this inning. Hopefully not letting Mahler score as that ball inside for ball one. Kenzie Ora still in for the Stars with this 3-0 lead on the Cougars. No movement out of the bullpen, at least at this point in time. So interesting to see what they're going to do with Kenzie Ora, if he's going to stay in for the remainder of this inning or if they're going to look to make a change later on. With the 1-2 count here, he delivers that one in there for strike three. Nick Rensberger caught looking there. And the Stars get out of that inning, but the Cougars put up three runs and take the 3-0 lead as we head to the top of the second here on the Cougar Sports Network. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, top of the second. Sam Gordon still dishing on the mound for the Cougars. Delivers strike one. Cougars took the early 3-0 lead over the Stars. Now Bono in game one was one for three. Two RBIs, a run, and also a home run to his name. So another person on the field today who is feeling it and has a hot bat right now. Definitely proven to be an offensive threat here against the Cougars. Following that one back, but he's definitely proven that he's going to hit the ball and he's going to make these pitchers work pretty hard. 
But Sam Gordon doing a great job of keeping composure here and throwing his pitches. As that ball is in the dirt for ball two. Now Bono connects with that one, but Crater gloves it, gets the throw over, and gets the out. A little bit off on the throw, but Kasich able to contain it and get that, that out. Kasich is really a strong first baseman for the Cougar squad. We've seen him make some athletic scoops. We've seen him make some athletic jumps. Doing a really great job at making sure that he gets that. Sometimes the first basements, too, they don't get a lot of love. So I think in this situation, like, if you don't have a good first base, oh, and now we're going to have a reverse call. After a challenge from the Stars, it looks like the umpires are going to be reversing that call, call and calling the runner safe. So now Bono is now going to be at first base. After a immediate or originally calling him out, he will now be safe. Head coach Colin Connor really unhappy with that call. An unfortunate turn for the Cougars, just giving Michael Kasich his credit. Still a very, very strong first baseman for this Cougar squad. McCall at the plate here for the Stars. Misses for ball one. McCall in game one, he went one for three, two runs, two RBIs, a double, and a walk. So... A little bit of everything from him in game one. And, you know, we're now going into what would be the ninth inning if we were going on a traditional nine-inning uh, nine game on a normal day. So at this point, he's seen the ball a lot today and gets another opportunity here to maybe score some runs for the Stars. That one hits for a strike. Brandon Mahler thought about throwing down, looking for that revenge out against Nalbono over at first. Gordon, after his first couple of batters that he's seen now, kind of looking to stay in the lower part of the zone, at least to this point. Again, like we've mentioned before, all the balls that have been up, they've been almost all been flying out of the park or getting picked up by the wind. So it's a smart approach on his part. As Gordon issues his first walk of the day, moves runner on to second base. As Partridge steps to the plate here. Matthew Partridge took up first base after Galdi was ejected in game one. He did not have any at-bats recorded. However, he has a .083 batting average on the year. He also has played in five games with five starts and has one hit recorded. Oh, one count here. Gordon checking on the runners, but delivers this pitch low for ball one. Interesting to see how Gordon has kind of shifted his focus from his first inning appearance, now looking to change the look of his pitches as he fires that one in for a strike. But now with that lower half of the zone being his focus, he's looking to paint both corners and be able to get on both ends of the strike zone against these hitters. Still no outs here in the top of the second. As Gordon gets another swinging strikeout. Oh my goodness. His fourth swinging strikeout of the day. Betty Knight, the shortstop. One, Only eight, facing eight, seven batters eight, so far, and four of them he's retired himself. What a way to start this game if you're Sam Gordon. Now another hitter up to the place who didn't get, who was in the game last game, but did not get a chance to go up to the plate is number one, A.J. Davies. He has a 161 batting average. He's played in 12 games. He's got five hits, nine runs to his name. So 
another star that's getting an opportunity here, getting the start now as he's playing shortstop. So see what he does here. Has that one real close inside for ball one. Gordon backing Davies off the plate a little bit. We've seen the Stars hugging that inside line just a little bit in game one, and we're seeing it here too. And Gordon delivering another strike in there. What that tells you there right, right with that type of approach at the um, in the box is that they're looking for these pitchers to try and get them some outside looks. They don't want to get the ball jammed in on their hands. They want everything to be outside of the plate. So eliminating that inside pitch can usually be effective, but right there, Gordon is not afraid to throw it as close as possible to those hitters. Sam Gordon really being an electric arm here for the Cougars. Again, every strikeout he's gotten today, he's gotten them swinging. So he's, he's throwing these pitches that these batters want to hit, but they just can't. And that says a lot about how Gordon is pitching today. Absolutely. And now we've got Ty Phillips up to the bat. He was one for one today. As that ball comes in. And on the other side of the, as a left-handed batter, you're seeing the way that he's standing compared to how um, Davies was in the box not eliminating that inside part for the left-handers, but still allowing a little bit of room for those outside pitches. As that ball has popped up, Kahiga's tracking it in and able to get the out. Cougars keep the Stars scoreless as we head to the bottom of the second. Cougars looking to keep that momentum in favor of them. Don't go anywhere here on the Cougar Sports Network. Cougar Nation, it's your favorite set of twins, Brandon and Jake. We're coming at you with a commercial. We love the support you give us on and off the field. To donate to our athletic communications department, hit the thank you button. This helps us continue to have the best live streams possible for some great Cougar baseball moments. Thank you and enjoy the game. Roll Cougs! Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, CUC leading Dominican 3-0 in the bottom of the second. Eli Hickman at the plate for the Cougars. Shows bunt, but pulls back. Takes ball one high and away. This is Hickman's first at bat of the day for game two. Game one, however, as that ball clips Hickman. Was, and we'll take his base. I was just about to mention that Hickman's had two walks on the day, so there's another base given to him just from being patient and being able to see what balls are thrown to him. And that's going to bring up the top of the lineup here for this Cougar squad. Julio Cahigas back at the plate. Julio Cahigas 0 for 1 so far in this game with a strikeout. However, he did have a huge home run in game one that helped to crack open the rally that the Cougars had to win that game.
Hickman takes off. And he's going to get caught stealing again. Hickman has gotten thrown out once from stealing today. And then earlier in game one, Hickman had a hard hit ball out to center and on his way to second was thrown out. So he's not having much luck at the at the second base today, actually. Yeah, unfortunately for Hickman, he gets caught up in that and then stuck in a situation where as, as soon as you commit to that, it, it is what it is. So now we've got no one on, one out with a one-two count for Julio Cajigas. Very surprising for Hickman there. Normally a very solid runner. He's quick on the bases. Five for seven coming into today for stolen bases, but one of the faster members of this Cougar team. So to see him have that unfortunate luck at second base two different times today, it's very surprising. Chris Kenziora still working out there for the Stars in this bottom of the second action. This is now the second time that this Cougar lineup is going to be seeing him. So we'll see how far that gets him or if Kenziora is going to be able to take what he learned in their first at-bats and use it against them. As Kahiga swinging a miss, strike three brings up Tyler Dorsch for the Cougars. Two outs now. After a really strong first inning, not something you're really looking forward to seeing here with two quick outs, nobody on. But Tyler Dorsch, one of the few guys that you're not sweating that if you're in this situation. Right, Tyler Dorsch, at least for today, he's had an incredible day so far. In this game specifically, he's one for one. So just continuing to build off of what he did in game one and bring it into game two, one of the more consistent hitters in their lineup. As that ball drops for ball two, Kenziora still working here for the Stars. Ten batters faced so far, 38 pitches thrown. Three strikeouts following that Cahigas strikeout. So he's he's putting in this work for the Stars. They're really not wanting to give Dorsch much right now. You can already see the, the difference between how they threw to Cahigas compared to Dorsch now. They are not giving him anything over the plate and working around the zone. However, that could give him the walk here as he has a 3-0 count. As that ball misses for ball four. But again, not the worst thing in the world to walk Tyler Dorsch if you're in this situation. Dorsch, again, a fast runner for this Cougar squad. Not afraid to steal bases. He's a perfect three for three on stolen bases this season. So, you know, he's a threat on the, on the base paths, but Arguably a bigger threat with a bat in his hands. And now we've got Brandon Mahler up at the plate. Sends that one out to left field, and it's dropping, but Heline able to grab it on a nice athletic sliding grab and is going to close that inning. No runs from the Cougars. As we head to the top of the third here in River Forest, you're watching CUC Baseball on the Cougar Sports Network.
Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, a new arm on the mound for CUC number 12, Richie Gomez. Richie Gomez, he's got a 3.97 ERA, one win to his name, eight appearances on the year. He also has picked up a, um, a start as well, 11.1 innings pitched and a three walk to 10 strikeout ratio. So some great numbers out of Gomez, a great arm to go to now as the Cougars are operating with a 3-0 lead in the top of the third. Final stat line for Sam Gordon. Two innings pitched, giving up two hits, no runs, one walk. An incredible five strikeouts, all of which were swinging strikeouts, might you add. On ten batters faced, only 39 pitches thrown. So a fantastic first outing for Sam Gordon in his collegiate debut. Cougars looking to give these star batters a different look, trying to keep them off balance as long as possible. As that ball misses four, ball four. So Heline will make his way to first, bringing up Kretsu. Third baseman, number 15, Nico Kretsu. As that ball misses low and away for ball one. Kreku, one of only two other hitters in this lineup who have gotten hit so far in game two today. He's one for one on this game two action. Gomez getting that one to fall for strike one. That one in the dirt for ball two. Cougar Athletics in action today. Cougar Baseball, the only team on campus playing, but softball made their way up to Kenosha, Wisconsin to take on Carthage as that ball finds its way through the gap. A great base hit there for Kretsu. Like you were just mentioning, softball just lost their first game to Carthage. And in just about 10 minutes, our men's lacrosse team is at Edgewood today, and they will be taking on the Eagles. So lots of action right now, some conference and non-conference play for our spring sports, but we are officially in Designated spring season here at CUC. Absolutely. For all of the updates and information about Cougar baseball and any other team here at CUC, you can head to cucougars.com. You can find information on rosters, stats, schedules, and more, as well as links to our broadcast like you're watching here. All of that available, again, cucougars.com. As Gomez works his way to a 1-1 count here, Schwartz at the plate for the Stars. Connects with that. Mahler able to grab it at second. Takes it himself. Gets the throw over. Not in time. A great attempt from Kasich, but unable to shovel that. And we're going to get that run scored. So the Stars officially get themselves on, on base here. Unfortunately for the Cougars on that one, it was a great play by Jake Mahler to pick that ball up and take it himself. But unfortunately, without setting his feet before he threw, he kind of just threw that ball straight into Kasich's feet. And at that point, you either get the pick or you don't. And on that one, Kasich just barely missed it. So the runner at third took the opportunity and scored a run for the Stars, making it 3-1. to one. That ball is going to be hit right to Kasich. Steps on first and then gets the throw over to second. A Great, great play there from Kasich. Just smart. That's great knowledge of what you're doing. So Cougars able to get out of that inning, giving up a run to the Stars. Still leading this ball game 3-1 to one as we head to the bottom of the third here on the Cougar the Sports Network. One run on one hit, one error.
back here on the Cougar Sports Network. Bottom of the third, Michael Kasich at the plate for the Cougars. Takes that one low for ball one. Kenzie Ora still on the mound for the Stars. Been a strong arm so far. Dominican clearly no intentions of taking him out at any point in the near future. No arms working in the bullpen. So going to stick with Kenzie Ora here. I mean, after that first inning with those three runs, since then Kenzie Ora has been pretty set at the, or at the mound. Excuse me. So it makes a lot of sense for him to stay in for right now, at least while they're still operating where they are at the moment. As Kasich gets ready here for the 1-2 pitch. Keeping this at-bat alive. Three can three back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back foul balls. That ball was hit almost straight into the Cougar dugout. So hopefully nobody hit on that one because it's pretty cold out. So don't want to get hit with any, anything that you don't see coming your way. As that ball misses outside for ball two. Kasek looking to stay alive here. As he cuts that one low and it's high. You see three players all coming together, but it's going to be Nalbono that is able to grab that. Secure the out, bring up Tyler Crater to the plate. So Cougars now one out, looking to start making their way around the bags here. Crater, at least in game two, is 0 for 1. He does have one home, or no, two home runs, excuse me, on the day, so... Still another opportunity for him here. There's nobody on base. Got a clear opportunity to continue to tack on some runs for the Cougars. Nothing from last inning. So, again, just wanting to kickstart that offense. Absolutely. As that ball misses outside for ball two. Crater connects, drops that one into shallow left field, picking up a nice, easy single to put hand things off to the next guy. And when the next guy up is Jake Mahler, you can't be too mad at that. He's one for one. I mean, I think Mahler, if I'm not mistaken, is perfect on the day so far at the plate. Yep. And he's got another RBI in game two. So, again, he has just been lights out for this Cougar lineup. And now he's got a runner on base to boot. As that ball misses inside. I know we talked about it in game one, but Mahler, a fairly new addition to this lineup for the Cougar squad. He initially, at the beginning parts of the season, was only seeing time as a pinch hitter, slowly worked his way in to a DH role, and then now making his way to second base and really has made an impact here on this lineup. Absolutely. I mean, at this point, if, if you're Coach Colin Connor, you just got to go where, to where your offense is. And I think between this game that we had in game one and their game against Wheaton yesterday, it's been nothing but offense from this team. And Jake Mahler has been a huge part of that. Absolutely. You mentioned it, Mahler being perfect on the day, but he's perfect in the last 24 hours because he went four for four at the plate yesterday, three for three at the plate in game one. And one for one at the plate today in game two. So a, a real offensive threat here. If you think about statistically, too, how many arms he's probably seen, that's absolutely incredible what he's been able to pull off so far, at least in the last three games that he's been in. There's been probably anywhere from six to eight different pitchers. Absolutely. As that ball is popped sky high and able to glove it is Partridge. So we jinxed Mahler a little bit here, breaking his perfect streak. And the Cougars quickly two outs now. Boswell coming up now is one for one as well. He had that ball that 
trickle down to center field that he hit, and then the error was made where he was able to get into scoring position. So he's getting some good looks off of him so far today. So let's see what he can do now in his second at bat. A great pitch there from Kenzie Ora. Catches the outside corner of the plate. One runner on base for the Cougars. Two outs here. As Boswell pops that one high and shallow. And he, Davies, excuse me, able to collect that and close the inning for the Cougars. So another no run inning for the Cougars despite picking up three in the first inning. So Cougars still, still leading, but still tra tracing and trying to find that offensive spark once again. But still on top as we head into the top of the fourth. We'll be right back on the Cougar Sports Network. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network. Richie Gomez still dishing on the mound for the Cougars delivers ball one. Again, trying to trying to brush Nalbono off the plate a little bit. Because that one is in there for strike one. Cougars still leading the stars 3-1. But game of baseball, anybody can take control at any moment we saw that previously in game one a such a back and forth game between the Cougars and the Stars so the Cougars really just looking to keep control here as Gomez drills Nalbono on the shoulder in conditions like this too when you've got weather like this outside you'll see that a lot more of the time just because I mean, being from this area and knowing how cold it can get, it still gets to you sometimes on days like this, especially with the wind. So now Richie Gomez has got to be able to lock back in and go after the next hitter. Absolutely. Gabe McCall now at the plate. Pops that one high into shallow center. Hickman tracking it and able to grab that one in. Hold Nalbono at first. And Cougars have one away. And again, just like I mentioned, that's some great work from Gomez to be able to take, you know, small mistake on his part in that last at bat and then just come right back next to the next hitter. And that's what you want out of the guy you got out there right now. Matthew Partridge at the plate for the Cougars. First baseman in game two for the Stars. Partridge is senior out of Reno, Nevada. So far today is 0 for 1 with a strikeout, but came in in that first game defensively and is now getting the opportunity at the plate. Gomez delivers this one. Cut into, cut foul from Partridge. Head into the Dominican dugout. Lucky, it looks like no one's hurt. There were some quick reflexes down there on the Stars' behalf. 
I'm pretty sure every single head that I see down there standing up went down below the netting. So some quick reflexes and nobody's hurt. Absolutely. A very, very scary situation to have a ball coming high speed into the dugout like that. Actually, last year during the Concordia Dominican doubleheader, a person was hit in the Cougar dugout from a foul ball exactly like that. Ended up having to get stitches inside his lip for it. So um, apparently it's a it's a bad place to be in during these Dominican Concordia games is inside one of the dugouts. As Partridge pops that one high into the sky, Hickman tracking it back in center field and gets under it. Holds the runner at first, and Cougars have two away. Hickman getting a lot of action out there in this inning with both the putouts on his part. But again, it's kind of like how we were talking about earlier, wanting to keep the ball out of the air, but at least on Gomez's part, he's still hammering into the lower half of the zone, but now the stars are starting to dip in their swings. They're really trying to get underneath the ball and hit it in those gaps, but he's getting enough spin on it that he's getting them to pop up rather than get base hits. Yeah, absolutely. Having Hickman out in center field, a, a strong leader for this Cougar squad. You've got really a veteran outfield for the Cougars. Um, you've got some older older guys out there that, that know the game well, play well together. But having Hickman in center field, something that the Cougars didn't have to start the season. And you can, you can see that difference in having that experience as your, your leader out there. On that foul tip, it looked like. Mahler's mask got knocked off for a bit. He's kind of just shaking his head, making sure that his mask is where it needs to be. So just making sure everything's working the way it should as Richie Gomez is up 0-1. That ball misses outside for ball one. Swing and a miss there for Davies. A one-two count now, two outs. Now Bono still hanging out on first over there. As that one is fouled straight back. Bringing in a guy like Gomez after having Gordon to start off the game is a great different look because Gordon really was going for the strikeouts. He was throwing the ball hard. Gomez now is really spinning it in the different spots that are throwing the Stars batters off, and that's what you really want out of that relief pitcher. Yeah, and this ball's hit deep out, but Eli Hickman doing what he does best as he picks up three catches to close this inning. A great outing for Eli Hickman out in center field, leaving the Stars scoreless once again as we head to the bottom of the fourth here on the Cougar Sports Network. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, bottom of the fourth. Cougars at the plate, Nick Rensberger. 
That ball inside. Kenzie Ora still working for the Stars. As that one is in there for strike one. Rensberger been a pretty consistent hitter for the Cougars. Struggled in his last few at-bats, but overall pretty consistent. He's shown some clutch hitting and some pretty key opportunities here this afternoon. So what you're looking to get out of your designated hitter is what you're getting out of Rensberger so far. His first at-bat of this game struck out looking as he lets that one go by for ball three. As that one misses for ball four. Bringing up Eli Hickman to the plate. Hickman, kind of been a magnet all afternoon. Had a hit by pitch and he had two walks in the first game. So we'll look to see what he does here, but hoping to take advantage of the situation, especially with no outs and a runner on first. Hickman drops that bunt down, a really well-placed bunt, and he's going to outrun it. A fantastic, fantastic bunt there for Hickman. Oh, my goodness. That just shows that veteran eye that we've talked about before. I mean, laying a bunt down, it's a risky move to take, but Eli Hickman has got the speed to make it, and he made the decision. You get it on the first pitch, and that, that takes a lot out of the sales for the Stars. Absolutely. And it's a perfect spot because now it puts Rensberger in scoring position. You got Julio Cahigas at the plate. No outs here. A really good spot for the Cougars to be in with their first three batters here. Cahigas takes a cut of that and fouls it. Cahigas 0 for 2 in this game with two strikeouts. So he's looking for a little bit of a revenge match right now. He does have a home run on the day, so it's not like he's having a horrible afternoon by any means. So just looking for the right pitch for him to take here. As Ken Ziora delivers this one, Cahigas thought about it but left it low and in the dirt. A great job from McCall there, keeping it in front of him. Bobbled it a little bit but didn't let it go anywhere with two people on base that are not afraid to take chances. McCall doing everything he can to limit those chances for this Cougar squad as that one is in there for strike two. As Ken Zior gets ready for this one. That one is low and in the dirt. McCall loses it. And just as I said a few moments ago, Cougars are going to take, take advantage of those opportunities. McCall did what he really could to keep that ball in front of him and unfortunately just lost it for a second. And it gave Rensberger and Heckman the chance to advance around the bases. Now there's a runner 90 feet from the plate. That's huge for the Cougars right now too because, again, we're operating on no outs. So being able to have them in scoring position is just going to make it a little bit better and keep the pressure on Dominican as much as possible. With runners on second and third, Cougars in a really good spot. No force double play here, something the Cougars have hit into a couple times today. So Kahig is really a base hit in almost anywhere on the field scores Rensberger as exactly that happens. Hickman's going to round. Third base coach Connor Nelson telling Hickman to hold up as Cahigas gets on base and scores one. To be completely frank with you, I'm pretty sure Hickman would have gone all the way if it wasn't for third base coach Connor Nelson. Whether he would have made it or not, it's up to de for debate. But to see that aggressiveness out of your base runners is what you want right now. We have a 4-1 to one game with the Cougars in front. And being able to tack on as much as possible is going to put that pressure on more and more and more on the Stars. 
Yeah, like you said, I'm not sure that, that Hickman had any intentions of slowing down. So really great coaching there from Connor Nelson to be able to, to get in position that, that Hickman could see him and stop with enough time as Cahigas goes down. Cahigas safely at second, and Hickman steals home and gets there safely. What a fantastic, fantastic base running there. I mean, that is your routine first and third play that you see out of a lot of the times is that you're throwing down to your shortstop to cut it off early and then get that runner who takes off for home. But when you've got Eli Hickman at third base, if you're not cutting that ball off basically right behind the mound, he's going to score, and he took advantage of it right there. So an awesome opportunity there. Hickman wanted to score on that hit and instead scores just a few moments later as Dorsch sends that one into left field. Drops right out there in front of Heline. Cougars are really putting in the work here. One batter after another. Next man up. Well, and now we've got Kenziora, who it looks like at least for the Cougars hitters, they're starting to time him up pretty well. And now we're seeing... Dominican's coach come out of the dugout to talk to his pitcher, maybe make a change here. So I think this could possibly be the day for him, but we will see what happens here. Yeah, I mean, we haven't seen any action down in the Stars bullpen yet. We're seeing some people heading there, heading there now, so you'd have to imagine that Ken Zior is going to stay in at least for a few more batters, needing the Stars to get an arm warmed up before making a change. So like you said, the Cougars really learning Kenziora's tendencies here and finding their ways to hit off of him. So you can imagine that within the next next few batters or potentially after this inning, we're going to see that that switch here for the Stars. I mean, for Kenziora, he is a senior, so he has that ability and has been in this situation before. So being able to rely on an arm like that in a situation like this one, maybe there, this is a test for him to see how he does with this situation. Still no outs here as that ball is in the dirt. Dorsch stealing second. Again, we've seen some aggressive running on the base paths for this Cougar squad. They're not afraid to go after it. Dorsch heading into today, three for three on stolen bases, make that four for four. It's also some heads-up coaching from first base coach Jose Mercado because as soon as that ball's in the dirt, you know you're telling your guy, you better get on your horse and get running because at this point we're taking any base that's open and left unoccupied, and that's exactly what he did. That ball fouled off of Mahler's bat. I think it might have clipped McCall's hand a little bit. He was uh, holding it a little, a little awkwardly but he appears to be all right. Sitting at a 1-1 count here for Mahler. As Mahler connects with that, sends it high and deep into right center. That ball's gonna get down all the way at the fence. Mahler's rounding first, heading to second. Cahigas is gonna score. Doris is gonna score. Mahler. Makes his way to third, and that ball gets through. So Brandon Mahler, an awkward slide, but he's going to safely make it to third. Yeah, a little bit of a stumble there to land at third, but might have an injury as well on that slide. When he went to go slide it in, looked like his cleat might have gotten stuck in the dirt. And he kind of flipped over it pretty awkwardly, like you were mentioning. A great hit from the catcher, but... Very awkward slide into third base where it looks like something might have obstructed him into sliding normally. And now Coach Connor Nelson is sitting with him and talking and seeing how he's doing down there. Looks like he's going to get up. Still chit-chatting with Coach Nelson over there, but he appears to be okay, which is such a relief. A fantastic player for the Cougars this freshman excuse me, sophomore catcher, who's been a big, big help for the Cougars since his freshman campaign last year. Mahler, all-conference honorable mention as a freshman, which is a really, really fantastic feat. One of the few players from this Cougar squad last year to get that all-conference recognition. So 
a fantastic triple for him, and glad to see that he's all right on it. If I'm the Cougars over there, I'm kind of breathing a sigh of relief <laughs> seeing him get up because he's been their go-to guy, and he's caught almost all of the games this year. So seeing that he's okay is definitely a big thing for them right now. Absolutely. So Michael Kasich at the plate now for the Cougars, a 2-0 count. Still no outs as Kasich sends that ball foul. Sun slowly starting to disappear here in River Forest, seeing some more clouds in the sky. Probably making it a little bit chillier out in that wind as Kasich connects, sends that one deep towards right field, but Kalik is able to grab it. Mahler's going to tag up and safely get home. So a great sacrifice fly there from Kasich, scoring another run and once again handing things off to the next guy. It's funny to see how Kasich approached that ball. I mean, his last two at-bats, he's taking the ball to the opposite side of the field when we're used to seeing him being a pole hitter for the most part. So interesting to see that out of him, but it's very good to see as well if you're a Cougar fan because – that versatility is going to be so important further and further into the season. So one out here. Tyler Crater at the plate. A 1-1 one, one count. Seeing some movement now in that Dominican bullpen. Cougars jumping out to an 8-1 to one lead after picking up five runs so far in this inning. So you can imagine that Kenziora's leash isn't going to be too much longer here. Crater sends that one high and foul. But looks like Partridge was going to be able to grab that just out of view of us. So that's going to hand things over to Jake Mahler. Second baseman number five, Jake Mahler. Operating now with two outs. Mahler been having himself a fantastic couple of days. Is that ball outside? We jinxed, jinxed Jake Mahler a little bit in his last at-bat, talking about him being on a nice little hot streak. Ended up popping out in his last at-bat, now sitting at a 1-1 one, one count, trying to, make, trying to make that on base streak restart here. Even with us jinxing him a little bit in the last <laughs> at-bat that he had, he's still one for two in this game, which in itself is incredible. It's been awesome. I mean, at this point, we got an 8-1 to one lead for the Cougars. Like we mentioned earlier, this lineup has been what's been producing the most offense for CUC. So continuing to see that out of them is what head coach Colin Connor is really going to be looking for. As that one hits for strike three. And Ken Ziora gets himself out of this inning. Five runs, four hits. And Cougars on top, 8-1. to one. Stars got to start working their way back here as we head to the top of the fifth here on the Cougar Sports Network.
What's up, Cougar fans? Thanks for tuning in today's broadcast. For all things Cougar baseball, head to Twitter or Instagram, type in CUC Baseball, and you'll find our page. Or visit cucougars.com. Thanks again. Go, Go Cougs! Cougs. Back here for the top of the fifth. Richie Gomez still working on the mound here for the Cougars. Delivers that one high for ball one. Back to the top of the order here for Dominican. Sun starting to peek back out just after I made a comment about how it disappeared. I would call that a good jinx, though, because if we can keep the sun out, it's making it a little bit warmer out there for all the players involved and all the fans, so I, I'm okay with that. Yeah, it's never never a bad day when the sun is out, that's for sure. As Gomez gets Phillips swinging on that one, follows it back, an even 2-2 two -two count now. Stars... Struggling to score here in this game so far. Trailing the Cougars 8 to 1. Phillips, at least at this point in game two, is one for two. So, as that ball is hit high and shallow, Boswell and Hickman all tracking it, but Boswell able to grab it. That Bermuda Triangle area out there between second shortstop and center field, especially on a day like today, is pretty dangerous because that ball up there in the sky even Kahika's got over there to try and help out because as soon as it's up in that space they're all crashing in to try and go after it so some great work by the, basically the center of the field to be able to catch that ball yeah I mean Bermuda Triangle that's a that's a fantastic term to describe that you've got some speed from Hickman being able to come in and cover that but you've got You've got Boswell that's also able to get there pretty quickly as that ball is hit right to Jake Mahler. I mean, again, the center of our field right now, second shortstop and center field have kind of been our our diamonds of the game so far because they've just really been putting all their effort out there and getting the work done. Absolutely. That brings Kretzu up to the plate with two outs. Gomez just putting in the work, delivering that one in there for strike one. The way that Gomez is pitching right now, too, it seems like he's just going for, you know, kind of the center of the strike zone. But for the most part, he's getting those balls either in the air popped up or on the ground and moving. So he's doing his job right now, and the defense is working behind him. Kretzu doing a number at the plate so far today, two singles in the first and the third inning. So he's uh, he's doing his part and getting on base, making Gomez pitch to him here as he sits with a 3-1 count. As swing and a miss there, Gomez catches him swinging a full count for Kretzu. Two outs here. Kretzu trying to keep the, the stars alive in this at-bat. And he's able to connect with that one. Sends it over to Boswell at short. Boswell, a nice quick throw over. And the Cougars get out of this inning. A fantastic effort there from the defense. Able to close that one out. Keeping the stars scoreless. Cougars still on top. 8-1. to one. We'll be back here on the Cougar Sports Network.
Back here on the Cougar Sports Network. New arm on the mound for the Stars. Number 42, Ethan Shepard. I'm going to get you that final stat line in just a second after a strike there. Shepard, he's got a 5.40 ERA, only three appearances in the year and only 3.1 innings pitched, but he's got a five walk to three strikeout ratio. So it looks like for him when he comes into the game, it's very much a commanding force that he comes in. short A short burst of time, but at least is coming in, making a difference, and then passing the ball off to the next guy. Ooh, as Boswell wears that one off the back. That one's got to hurt. Especially right now in this cold, that has got to hurt. Absolutely. You can see Boswell wincing in pain a little bit. Not something that you really want to have uh, – a pitch worn right off the, your shoulder blade, especially, like you said, when it's this chilly out. Not something that you're looking forward to. Rensberger coming up now. He's 0 for 1 with a walk and a strikeout. So now with a with a new arm out there on the mound, see what he can do. That ball in there for strike one. Shepard hitting his first batter of the day, but we'll rewind a little bit, look at Kenziora's Stat line, pitching four innings, giving up ten hits, eight runs, two walks, but picking up four strikeouts in the process. Faced 24 batters through, through 88 total pitches. So an overall, you know, a, a pretty solid outing there, picking up, again, four strikeouts. He was doing some real work for the Stars in the early innings, and Cougars just took advantage of him late in the fourth as Shepard – Bounces that one off of Rensberger as well. So quickly, two two Cougars on base. And that pitch specifically, I mean, that looked like it was probably going to be some sort of off speed, but just kind of fell out of his hand a little bit. And now we've got runners on first and second for the Cougars with no outs and Eli Hickman coming up. And right after Hickman is the top of the order. Absolutely, you said it kind of kind of fell out of Shepard's hand a little bit there. Definitely looked a little less painful than the one that hit Boswell as that one flies out of his hand. Both runners advancing a little bit. Even Shepard looking down at his own hand just confused as to what happened there. So Shepard, at least right now, I mean, you're watching his arm come out in his – in his approach and it's kind of fly flying out of the slot that it normally would run into. I mean, every pitcher's got their own way that they throw, especially in baseball. You've got everything from sidearms to normal over the top motion, but he's a little inconsistent with where his arm's slotting into, at least on that one, he was able to get it back to, for a strike, but a little inconsistent, at least to start out here for Shepard. It's definitely showing too, like you said, you know, Every pitcher is a little bit different, but he's thrown some good strikes and he's thrown some really wild pitches. So the inconsistency here is something that the Cougars can settle in on. If they settle, they wait for their pitches, they make Shepard pitch to him. Cougars are going to be able to, to find find their groove here if he's going to continue to to be a little bit little bit off with it. As Hickman swing and a miss there. 2-2 two -two count now. That ball curved in just a little bit, but still miss a full count here. Shepard's definitely got some movement on his pitches. It just comes down to where he's starting the pitch and where he's placing it, because I think that's going to be the big determinant on whether he's going to be successful here. That one outside for ball four. Bases loaded, top of the order here for the Cougars, a fantastic spot to be in. Julio Cajigas now at the plate. Seeing some movement over in the stars at bullpen. Interesting note here, Shepard, only two hit pitches this season so far, and he's hit two batters in this game that he's been throwing. So not not his game right now, but he's uh, doing a great job at staying in it and fighting as he gets Kahiga swinging at that one. 
you know, at this point, we got bases loaded with no outs. It really comes down to how is Shepard going to approach this challenge, and is he going to be able to reel it back in a little bit and go after these Cougar hitters, or is he going to be a little bit more concerned about the control issue that he's having at the moment and have balls fly a little bit outside of his parameters? Great job there from McCall to keep that ball in front of him. We, we saw it a couple times earlier today, but especially seeing some – Wild pitches from Shepard already here. If that ball gets past McCall, there's a 99.9% .9 chance that Boswell is going to come come running in. It's something the Cougars have been really, really on top of, of taking advantage of those pass balls and wild pitches. So something that McCall, I'm sure, is being very conscious of is that ball is hit foul. I will say, at least in this situation, Shepard is now ahead one and two. So Cahigas has got to decide, is he going to foul off these pitches until he gets what he wants, or is he going to be a little bit more selective and let some pitches go by? One-two count now here. Shepard with the delivery. Misses for a ball two. Two two count, no outs here. Cahigas swing and a miss. Not finding success there. Brings up Tyler Dorsch. Again, one out here now. Bases loaded. Dorsch, a pretty consistent hitter for the Cougars, just looking to put a ball in play, send a runner home. As that one way inside for ball one. Dorsch so far in game two is two for two with two runs and a walk. So like you said, pretty pretty dang consistent. So we'll look to see how he takes on Shepard right now, who again has been having a little bit of a control issue, but just came back and got Cahigas with a strikeout. As that one gets past Boswell, started to go, hesitated. And then ended up not going. So there's that 0.01% chance that I was talking about that he wasn't going to go. I think the, the ball taking a, a pretty good bounce off the net played a, played a factor in that. But McCall really working his tail off behind the plate. Well, one thing you don't want to do if you're Boswell is kind of take an, an opportunity like that, have the ball bounce off the brick or the net, and then get caught at home. Because then all of a sudden you've got runners on second and third and two outs for Doris instead of bases loaded with one out. So, And when you've got a guy like Doris up to bat, you might as well just let him swing and take care of it himself. Absolutely. 3-0 count here. Shepard delivers that one in there for ball four. So all the runners are going to advance. Boswell will score and that puts Brandon Mahler back at the plate. Again, a really good spot for the Cougars. Bases loaded, one out. Brandon Mahler at the plate. Still a great a great hitter here. Wanting to capitalize on this. Brandon Mahler so far in the second game is two for three, two RBIs, two runs, a double and a triple. As that ball that was pretty dang <laughs> close. And Mahler got a little, he he completely jumped out of the box for that one. So I don't blame him in the slightest because after Mahler's triple, he had a pretty nasty fall in his slide. So right now, would it be great for him to get hit by a pitch and let a run score? Sure. But I would not mind having him stay in there and swing the bat as well. Absolutely. Again, you said it, a little bit of a tough fall for him after his triple. So yeah, a free base would be fantastic, but at the cost of, you know, a healthy catcher, I don't think anybody's willing to risk that right now. So, Cougar Bowl, or Cougar Dugout, excuse me, is getting hyped up to the music, really feeling the atmosphere right now. So, really just wanted to get behind their catcher. As that ball is hit up the middle, and they're going to be able to turn the double play. Excuse me, now Bono over to Davies, over to Partridge, gets them out of this inning. A really, really fantastic and much needed double play for the Stars there to get out of it. What a way to, to handle business. As we get set for the top of the six, Cougars still ahead of the Stars 9-1. to one. We will be right back on the Cougar Sports Network.
Cougar, Cougar, Cougar fans. fans. We appreciate you turning in today's game. To stay up to date on all things CUC baseball, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CUC Baseball. We'll see you on campus soon. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, Schwartz wasting no time. Oh, wow, very athletic grab there from Hickman, barehanding it in the outfield, but Schwartz swinging at the first pitch and picking up a stand-up double from it. That's one way to come out into this inning. I mean, this is kind of a flip-flop situation from game one, so now the Stars are going to look to try and start chipping away at the Cougars – lead here and starting off with a double is not a bad way to start off. Gomez delivers that one in the dirt for ball one. That one just misses for ball two. Kalikas at the plate for the Stars. Still chasing his first hit of the game. As that one's in there for strike one. Gomez continuing to just paint the corners in the best way possible. He's going in and out a lot with his pitches and really just making sure that he's keeping those batters on their toes. And with that one at least coming from high to low, he's – giving them different looks, just trying to keep them off balance and hopefully catch their timing off. Gomez in his already pitched three innings here for the Cougars. Doing a great job at keeping things where they are. So far giving up one run on two hits, but the Cougars still lead 9-1. to one. So overall, another fantastic performance from the freshman pitcher. Full count here. Kalikas connects with that, sends it high and in the sky. Dorsch tracking it, goes foul. Sliding effort from Tyler Dorsch to try to grab that foul ball, but just unfortunately couldn't quite get there in time. You watch that ball go up in the air, and you watch the wind absolutely take it because that ball looked like it was going to be a routine fly ball for Dorsch out in right field, but all of a sudden it's a gust of wind takes it, and it's a foul ball. So, again, still operating with that wind today and trying to maneuver around it. So that ball is chopped up the middle. Boswell able to collect it. Sends a wild throw over to Kasich at first. So Kalikas is going to get on there. Schwartz making his way over to third. Gomez making a great pitch there to get that ground ball and do that ground ball here. But Boswell on that pitch in that ground ball, it would be better for him to just go ahead and go and grab it on the short hop take it through rather than waiting back on his heels for it. Mahler with a throw down. Can't quite get it. Something we've seen Brandon Mahler do quite a bit throughout the season is catch those runners a little bit too far off and lacking in getting back to the base. Brandon Mahler with the quick throw down to first. He's been fairly fairly successful at it this season, so not surprising to see him continue to attack there. Well, with a first and third situation like this one, you're going to see that runner at first base really take advantage of his, how far off he can get. So that ball is chopped. Crater off-balance throw. Unable to get there in time. Tough play for Crater. That was super athletic, and I mean, to dribble her up, it's almost like a swinging butt in a way. So he, when he gets up there and he makes that on-the-throw run, there's nothing he can really do other than what he just completed. Gomez doing his job getting those ground balls, but just not being able to get the timely plays that the Cougars need. We're going to see a little bit of a conversation here. Head coach Colin Connor coming out to talk to his infield, discuss things. Again, Cougars still leading, still having control, but this is the first time we've seen a bases-loaded situation for the Stars here. If you're Coach Connor going out there to calm down this infield, 
and give them a discussion. What are you saying to them right now? I think right now, we're, they're just playing on their heels a little bit. I mean, Crater made a great play, but that ball to Boswell, you just really have to get up there and go after it. I think with a lead like this, it is 9-1, to one, but we made it a point in the first game that if you're up by eight or more runs, that does not mean that this game is put away entirely. So rather than leave the door open for the Stars, they've got to be able to slam it shut right now. Absolutely. You've got a bases loaded situation. No outs. If you're Dominican, this is exactly where you want to be to start your climb back. I mean, no outs is huge right now because at this point, the Cougars have got to make three perfect plays, three perfect opportunities with these next three batters in order to have nothing happen. So if you're the Stars, you're just taking every single bite of it and trying to get the most out of it. As that ball is chopped foul just barely that ball was actually laced down the left field line and just barely fell if that would have been fair that would have at least been a double absolutely and potentially you know scoring two maybe maybe even three runners on that so a really really good foul ball there as that one misses for ball two Gomez, only one walk here today, looking to keep it that way with a bases loaded situation here. You do not want to walk a batter here. The 3-1 count now. Gomez with a delivery. Ball four. Runners all advancing. Schwartz is going to score on this. And the Stars... Slowly chipping away at the Cougar lead. Partridge at the plate for Dominican. Still no outs. Bases loaded. First baseman number 18, Matthew Partridge. Partridge 0 for 2 so far today. So looking for his first hit still, but he's seen enough of the Cougar pitchers that he might get an opportunity here. And again, like you mentioned before, bases loaded. Last thing we want right now is another walked in run. Still 9 to 2 with the Cougars ahead with a healthy lead, but. Yep, bases loaded. That's four runs that you're potentially looking at if you miss pitch. That ball missed just high. A 1-1 one -one count here. Like you said, a, Cougars have a healthy lead, but in the game of baseball, nothing is too out of reach. As that one misses inside, Cougars overcame a hardy deficit in game one against the Stars. The Stars looking to do the same thing here. And no outs, bases loaded is a really great start to it as Partridge swings through that one, a 2-2 count now. And if you're out there pitching against this team right now, you can't be afraid of them. You have to go after them because at this point, you, you've had your defense behind you. There's no reason you can't trust them. Swing and a miss. That is one way to get out of that. Richie Gomez taking matters into his own hands. Picks up the first out of the inning off of a strikeout. One out now. Bases still loaded. We're going to have a pinch hitter here. Number 31, Alex Garcia. Alex Garcia, so far this year, has only appeared in two games and only had two at-bats. Still looking for his first hit of the season. The so a huge opportunity for him here Alex to see what Garcia. he can do in a, you know, a pretty serious situation. Stars still sitting in a really comfortable spot here. Looking to capitalize as Garcia sends that high and... Shallow Crater tracking it, loses it, unable to get it. And Kalikas is going to score from it. Not sure if that was the wind playing a factor or the bright sky, but either way, Garcia is going to successfully get to first. Everybody's going to move around, and the stars are going to chip away, but we're going to get a... New pitcher here, so we'll get you all the information on that as soon as we get back here on the Cougar Sports Network. Yeah. <laughs> 
Our name's Richard. Hey Cougar fans, thank you for tuning in to today's game. For more information on the baseball program, head to cucougars.com. We hope to see you at our next game. Roll Cougs! Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, a new arm on the mound for the Cougars, number 47, David Gutierrez, looking to get the Cougars out of this jam here. Gutierrez, he's got a 4.7 ERA on the year with seven appearances, 7.2 innings pitched so far, seven walks, two strikeouts, and six runs given up. So he's had some time. He had a very notable uh, game in at Center College when the Cougars traveled down to Kentucky. He had a great outing there. So he's had some great games so far, and we'll look to see what he does in this situation. Absolutely. We had a pinch runner on first for the Stars, number 28. Braden Galvin making his way on base. But a quick... 1-2 count here, or 2-1 count, excuse me, for Phillips at the plate. Final stat line for Richie Gomez, 3.1 innings pitched, four hits, three runs, two walks. Gomez still did his job up until he got pulled from the game, but I think when you're the Cougars, it's not even coming down to whether or not he's doing his job. It's just giving the Stars a different look at what they're getting from this pitcher now to Gutierrez to throw them off. And that's exactly what, what we're going to see there. A strike out from Gutierrez. Quickly picks up two outs. Keeps those bases loaded. Puts the pressure now on Zach, Zachary Heline. Left fielder, number 34, Zachary Heline. Heline 0 for 2 today with a walk, a strikeout, and a run scored. So looking for his first hit in this game right now and a big opportunity. Now that the Cougars have two outs in this situation, but still bases loaded. He lined an interesting routine as he comes up to the plate for the first time. Always does a nice little bat flip, catches it himself. Maybe just a little confidence booster or something there, but always fun to see. As someone who played collegiate softball, I think if I would have tried to do that, I for sure would have dropped my bat. So <laughs> more props to him for being able to do it because that's not very easy to do. And he makes it look effortless too. It's just a, it's a routine thing for him. As he takes that one upstairs for ball two. And again, he lined pretty far in on that inside corner. He's as far in on the box as he can get. So really, they are quite literally trying to eliminate the inside pitch potential. But Gutierrez, with that pitch right there, isn't afraid to go in in that spot. Just misses, though, for ball three. So a 3-1 count now. Bases loaded, needing to throw a strike here. And he does, gets him swinging. 3-2 count. Gutierrez looking to close this thing out, minimize the damage here. Well, 3-2, two, two outs. I mean, all of these runners are going to be going, so it's going to be a little bit of a pandemonium type of situation after this pitch. Swing and a miss. David Gutierrez gets the swinging strikeout. Oh, my goodness. What a way to close the inning. You've got... Gutierrez coming in and doing his job and gets the Cougars out of that jam. Stars starting their, to make their way back. 
Tacking on two runs, Cougars still leading nine to three as we head to the bottom of the six here on the Cougar Sports Network. Cougar Nation, it's your favorite set of twins, Brandon and Jake. We're coming at you with a commercial. We love the support you give us on and off the field. To donate to our athletic communications department, hit the thank you button. This helps us continue to have the best live streams possible for some great Cougar baseball moments. Thank you and enjoy the game. Roll Cubs! Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, Michael Kasich swinging at the first pitch. A hard ball over to third and beats the throw. Going to bring up number 52, Tyler Crater. Crater one for three on the day. That ball hit over to third base. A little bit of a bobble there by their star third baseman and... Now we're looking at Kasich on first base and Crater right behind him, ready to do some damage. Crater taking a chop at that. That ball, high four, ball one. Shepard still working on the mound for the Stars. Crater takes a swing at that. Bounces off of the brick backstop all the way back out to Shepard. Shepard, after last inning, having a little bit of a an issue with placing his pitches, looking a lot more controlled. So you have to assume that he got to talk with his coaches or go down to the bullpen for a bit in between innings. As that one gets a little bit away from him there, Makes this a 2-2 two, two count now. Kasich over on first. No outs for the Cougars. Crater sends that one foul towards the Cougar dugout. Cougars yelling at their teammates. Send it that way. Trying to straighten that hit out a little bit. As he does straighten it out a little bit. That ball high and into the gap. A diving catch made from Phillips. What a great play. Kasich staying right where he's at. It's going to bring up Jake Mahler. Mahler won for three today with an RBI. He does have a strikeout as well, but has had a pretty decent day. I mean, I know we jinxed him earlier, but he's had a pretty good week in general, which – us jinxing it isn't going to take that away from him at all. So, But looking right now, we got Kasich on first. I mean, we have a 9-3 lead right now for CUC, but anything to add on to that to have a cushion is going to be wanted. As that ball hits for strike one, 
I'd like to make this our formal apology to Jake Mahler for jinxing him a little bit. He was on a hot streak, and we 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 jinxed that. So that that's that's on us, Jake. But as he lets that one go for ball one, Kasich thought about going, gets himself in a little bit of a rundown, and unfortunately, just caught in a bad spot. In that situation, too, there's nothing he can do once he's caught. It's either go back to first and get tacked out or do what he just did and at least try to get the extra bag. And, unfortunately, he's out on that play. So, two outs now. That one a low for ball two. Stars put up. Two runs in there, half of this inning. Cougars looking to equalize that. Because that one is chopped foul. Cougars still leading 9-3, to three though. But hoping to win back some of those runs that were given up. As Mahler chops that one back straight over the press box. Wind still blowing straight out here at the Thunderdome. Consistently changing, though, from batter to batter. So it's super unpredictable. But Mahler doing a great job of battling through this at bat. A 3-2 count now. Two outs. Nothing that the Cougars aren't used to is operating with a two-out situation. So as... Mahler lets that one go and safely takes his base, handing things over to Yashan Boswell. Like you said, Cougars not afraid of operating with two outs, something we've seen consistently throughout the day in this game. Two for six with, on hits with two outs, so something that they're very familiar with. And we mentioned it earlier in game one, We've seen a handful of hits, a handful of momentum sh momentum shifting hits, excuse me, with two outs. So Boswell swinging through that first ball there. Deshaun Boswell so far this in game two is one for two. He has a run scored. He was also hit by a pitch when Shepard first came in. So this is the second time now seeing him up at the plate. As that one... Real close to clipping Boswell in the head, just able to get out of the way. We've seen it with Shepard a little bit. Those balls just coming off of his hand oddly and, and causing them to go a little bit astray. Something that just happened there with that, that wild one coming straight for Boswell. But doing a great job at being able to reel things back in, get control, and find his groove once again. As that one misses low and away for ball three. A 3-1 three count now. Two outs here. Boswell just playing smart, making Shepard pitch to him. Shepard checking over on Jake Mahler. Mahler hadn't even left the base yet. Mahler was uh, still camped on first when Shepard checked him. So a very, very interesting mind game to play there. As Thanks. that ball gets away, Mahler's going to take his base. So will Boswell. Big smile from Mahler, though, when he saw that <laughs> ball fly back. He just kind of smiled and kind of just said, oh, well, that, that is what it is. And now we've got runners on first and second. Two outs. Rensberger, I think this is like the fourth or fifth time today he's been <laughs> in this situation. So this has been continual for him. And now we're seeing Dominican's coach come out. It looks like it might be a signal down to the bullpen. So we might have a new arm coming in. Yeah, it does appear that way. Shepard handing the ball off. So we're going to see a pitching change. So while they get reset, we're going to take a quick break here, and we'll be back with the final stat line for Shepard and all the information you need on our new arm for the Stars. Don't go anywhere here on the Cougar Sports Network.
up, Cougar fans? Thanks for tuning in today's broadcast. For all things Cougar baseball, head to Twitter or Instagram. Type in CUC Baseball and you'll find our page. Or visit cucougars.com. Thanks again. Go, Go Cougars! Cougars. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, Nick Rensberger at the plate for the Cougars. We've got a new arm, number 14, Jackson Tanko. Tanko is operating with a 13.5 ERA so far this season. Only three appearances and 2.2 innings pitched. He's got three walks to his name, no strikeouts, and six runs scored. So... Hasn't seen a lot of action so far this season, but again, an opportunity here for the Cougars that he's being thrown into. Oh my goodness. That is a hard ball off the shoulder for Nick Rensberger. Good to see that he is perfectly fine. That's now his second hit by pitch, correct? In the last I do believe so. His last at bat. So he's just kind of getting beat up this game, but taking it like a champ, and now we got bases loaded for Eli Hickman. I mean Prior prior to Rensberger getting hit by that pitch there, I was starting to get a little deja vu. Two outs, runners on first and second. It's exactly what Nick Rensberger did in game one and, and really shifted the momentum with a, a double there. So I was, I was starting to get a little freaked out. But now we've got bases loaded, two outs for Eli Hickman. Takes a look at strike one. Tanko, we're going to see how he operates now after kind of making a little bit of a miscue with his first batter, but it's to be expected every once in a while, especially in a game like this. It's been a long day. It's pretty cold, windy. He's going to have a little bit of an issue first coming out of the bullpen, depending on how long he's really been warming up, but starting to come back in now as he's ahead 0-2. Tanko, a sophomore pitcher from Las Vegas, so something to note, there's a lot of players from out west on the field today, Dominican has a hardy roster from Las Vegas area and even into California a bit. Cougars, a lot of athletes from Arizona, a lot of warmer states. So playing in a cold game like today is such an adjustment when you grew up playing your whole life in warm weather. That ball misses for ball two. As someone who played college softball with girls who grew up in California, Florida, Georgia, all Arizona, they come here and they play indoors for the first time or they play in the cold for the first time. And it's it's a, it's a shock for them. But being able to get used to that and making an adjustment is what's going to be key. As Hickman takes that for ball three. So two outs now. Bases loaded and a full count. Rensberger doing some some stretching over on first, getting ready to, to to take off. As you can imagine, they're all taking off on the pitch. They do, and 
a walk there. So Rensberger, no worries on making your mad dash stretched to be ready anyway, but we're going to see the top of the order here for the Cougars. Julio Cajigas so far in game two. He's one for four, one RBI, one run. He's had three strikeouts so far, but with a new arm on the mound. We'll see how he does here with bases loaded two outs. That ball in there for strike one. Wind still blowing out here at the Thunderdome. Haven't seen haven't seen any home runs in a while, PL. It has been a minute since we've seen one. I really hope that that. Oh, looks like looks like we have a balk here. So that is going to score another run. That's going to be a huge, huge moment right there. I mean, taking out the wind from the Dominican sails a little bit on that one because scores another run across the plate. As Cahigas pops this one up into shallow second. Oh, my goodness. Unable to glove it is now Bono. So Cahigas gets on base. Hickman over to third, and Rensberger is going to score. Puts Tyler Dorsch at the plate. Cougars now ahead at 12 to 3. Right fielder number 23, Tyler Dorsch. Dorsch so far today, two for two, two runs, an RBI, and two walks. So, again, he's just been super consistent in that two spot. For the Cougars, we got runners on first and third with two outs here. He takes. Ball one there. We've mentioned it a handful of times, but the Cougars are not afraid to operate with two outs. They, they've seen some, some big numbers coming from these two outs. And still, Tyler Dorsch hanging in there like a champ, making Tanko pitch to him and not, not getting flustered when, when working with two outs here. Sometimes in these situations, it's a little bit better for a batter, and especially the base runners. The – kind of the thought process of if the ball does this or the ball does that is completely taken out because when you have two outs, you're just going. So at least at that point, all of our base runners are going to be aggressive, and at the plate, it's just do or die at that time. So they're really taking advantage of that op opportunity right now at least. Dorsch fouling that one straight back, evens at a 2-2 two -two count. Dorsch seeing some family in the stands here in River Forest, making the journey from Arizona. Being able to enjoy baseball at the Thunderdome as that ball hit foul towards the Dominican Stars bullpen. 2-2 two -two count, two outs. We've got twos across the board. The delivery uh, fouled back once again. Dorsch keeping his at-bat alive. I mean, this is a quality at-bat from Dorsch as he continues to foul off the pitches that he doesn't want because last thing you want to do right now in this situation is let a ball go past. That could be a strike. So trying to find what he wants or waiting for Tanko to make a mistake. As that one inside, I think it caught – it caught McCall in an awkward spot. Hit Dorsch a little. as well on the delivery, too. So I think that was almost like a two-for-one hit that he had, that Tanko had from Dorsch over to his catcher. So, again, not a great spot to be in when you're getting hit at this point in the game. So taking them like champs and moving on to the next one, which that brings up Brandon Mahler, who's two-for-four today, two RBIs, two hits, a double, a triple. And now we got bases loaded once again, but now with two outs. Yeah, McCall really taking a beating behind the plate, being a brick wall, trying not to let anything pass him, and wearing some of these, these wild pitches off of himself as well as Tanko delivers strike one. Really on the top of the strike zone there, Mahler – not really looking for that pitch on that one, but now he knows that's where the umpire is looking for it. So being able to make that adjustment now will be crucial to see how he does in this situation. 
Mahler takes a hack at that one, swings right through, and an 0-2 count now, two outs. Tanko looking to get the Stars out of this inning. Cougars looking to keep themselves fighting in this inning, trying to tack on a couple more runs with these runners on bases. That one misses outside. Great spot there, though, from Tanko. I mean, that's a great, you know, chase pitch to, to spot on the outside corner, but at least at this point in time, Mahler has seen enough at-bats today that he's being very vigilant on what he's going to go after. As that one misses for ball two. Lots of action for Cougar Athletics today. Cougar men's lacrosse taking on Edgewood College, currently falling to them in the third quarter. Cougar softball up at Carthage as Mahler drops that one into shallow left center. Hickman able to score. Kahiga's going to be held up at third. Bases still loaded, all runners advancing. So a fantastic at bat for Mahler, doing what he needed to do to get things done. Like you were mentioning about softball, they're now down 2-1 to one in the bottom of the fourth at, up at Carthage. So Cougar, Cougar Athletics getting a lot of work in up north and here in River Forest. So now it looks like we're going to have timeout called, and it looks like we're going to have a pitching change here on the mound. So while we get that pitching change and everything gets settled here in River Forest, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back on the Cougar Sports Network. Hey there, Cougar fans. We appreciate you turning in today's game. To stay up to date on all things CUC Baseball, follow us on Twitter and Instagram at CUC Baseball. We'll see you on campus soon. Hi, Mom. Hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network, Michael Kasich at the plate. A new arm for the Stars in number 13, Kian Aikita Flynn. As Kasich takes strike one. Aikita Flynn so far this year has an 11.57 ERA, only three appearances and 4.2 innings pitched. At this point in time, he's got five walks, two strikeouts, and seven runs scored on him. So, again, very similar to Tanko. Not a whole lot of time out on the mound, but getting another opportunity here with the bases loaded, two outs. Cougars been doing a really good job working through this inning, operating the majority of the inning with two outs. The Stars looking to close that. Cougars haven't been too successful on continuing that two-out success once a pitching change has come in. So this uh, this pitching change might frazzle them a little bit as Kasik sends that ball deep into left center. That bounces off the wall. Cahigas is going to score. Dorsch almost 
almost laps him there. And that's going to be a stand-up double for Michael Kasich. Mahler makes his way to third and hands things over to Tyler Crater. I mean, you kind of reverse jinx them there. We're, we're really on the jinx train on the Cougar Sports Network today, but uh, we will take the reverse jinxing because right after you said that they might not do a good job with that, he hits that ball into the left center gap. So some great work out of Crater. Or out of Kasich, excuse me. So Tyler Crater at the plate swinging through that one. Cougars now up 15 to 3. As the sun is slowly setting in River Forest. Crater connects, sends that one foul, almost takes Brandon Mahler out. Brandon Mahler drops to the ground to avoid being being taken out by that one. I don't know what it is about the Mahler brothers today, but he's been having not so much fun over at third <laughs> so far, and we jinxed the other Mahler brother. So apologies to the Mahler family on that, but at least he's got quick reflexes over there at third. Absolutely. Crater sends that one high and deep into center field. That one is gone! Bingo, bango, bongo! Tyler Crater with another home run. An amazing, amazing at-bat for Tyler Crater. What a phenomenal ending here in this at-bat as Cougars go up 18-3. to I really did reverse drink, jinx the Cougars here. I am happy you did at this point because, hey, that is a great ball right there from Crater to hit that ball square as he did straight over the center field wall, the furthest point of this park here at the Thunderdome. I mean, that puppy sailed out of here. As Jake Mahler. <laughs> Jake Mahler at the plate, already looked at ball one, now looking at ball two. Strike one in there for Ikeda Flynn. PL, I'm sure that if you walked over to the softball field right now, there's there's a dozen baseballs over there. I'm telling you right now that when the team gets back from their trip up to Carthage, where right now the score is 2-1 to one in the top of the fifth, they're going to find a lot out there, and they're probably going to be chucking it back over. So, But, hey, as it goes over at softball, we do have this thing called the car counter that – the foul balls get hit onto Division Street. And I have to say, if we could see how many cars got hit today just from the home runs, they're probably giving softball a little run for their money right now. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's a great problem to have if you really think about it. It's unfortunate for any of those cars driving by or any of those cars that are parked on Division Street, but a great problem for the Cougars to have as Mahler connects with that, keeps his at-bat alive. I mentioned making my plea to River Forest earlier to change the name <laughs> to Home Run City, but I think we should also maybe get some, some street signs out there to warn visitors not to park on the street as Jake Mahler looks at strike three, and the Cougars end that inning in a monstrous way. Nine runs on three hits, a fantastic offensive outing, so... Cougars on top as we head to the top of the seventh. Scores 18 to three here in River Forest. Don't go anywhere on the Cougar Sports Network. Cordial University Chicago is a Christ-centered Lutheran university where truth, freedom, and vocation form students for lives of influence and service for the common good. Our university offers a wide variety of undergraduate and graduate degree options that are available in person and online. That means we have a program designed for you. Whether you're a high school student, an adult returning to complete your degree, or someone looking to enhance your credentials and prepare for career growth. As a member of this university community, you'll also find support in your spiritual and personal life so you can grow in the faith and discover ways to serve others. 
To start your next journey with us, visit cuchicago.edu today. Back here on the Cougar Sports Network. The Cougars are dominating here in this game. We are in the top of the seventh. David Gutierrez still working on the mound. Kretsu taking two quick strikes. Gutierrez, part of the G-Force, making their way on the mound today. The three pitchers we've seen for the Cougars today, Sam Gordon, Richie Gomez, and now David Gutierrez as that ball is put into play. Boswell over to Kasich, gets the out. Hands things over to, looks like we have a pinch hitter. It's gonna be number 21, Gavin Zapp. Hitting in place of Schwartz here. Gavin Zapp, 143 batting average on the year, eight games played. So far, he's only picked up one hit so far on his seven at-bats. So we'll see here what he can do. I mean, I think at this point, the star is just trying to get some guys in the lineup that haven't seen Gutierrez and give them an opportunity to get the offense started. I mean, when you have this big of a deficit, it can't hurt to give them that opportunity. Absolutely. So Zap now a 2-0 count. Gutierrez starting to work back into the count. Picks up a strike there. Cougars picked up nine runs in the last inning, their highest of the game. Matching the uh, Stars' nine runs that they earned in the second inning of the first game. So a pretty, pretty offensive heavy day all across the board here. As Zap sends that one through the gap, gets his way on to first base. Yeah, we've got another pinch hitter here, number 27, Peyton Arsenault. Peyton Arsenault, 200 hitter on the season, eight games played. He's gotten two hits so far. He scored a run. He also has a triple and an RBI to his name. So clearly some speed out of him that we might see. First pitch swinging on that one. Hits that deep into left field. Off the wall, Cahigas able to get it in. No runner scored, but a great double there for Arsenal. I mean, he just got, a, got fearless on that one. He immediately went after it and he immediately hit the ball straight over Cahigas. I mean, Cahigas was, I think, pinched in a little bit in order to attribute to that and speed just in case he dropped one in front of him, but he absolutely muscled that one. Looks like we're going to keep on with the trend. We're going to get another pinch hitter here. It's going to be number 17, Chase Duvall. So the Stars really... Looking to get things moving, Duvall swinging right through that. And what it looks like right now is number 17. He has not had an at-bat yet this season, so this will be his first time at the plate. Chase Duvall, a freshman out of Las Vegas, Nevada. Chops that one foul, an 0-2 count now. The Stars just looking to get anything moving here. No harm, no foul, just trying to, trying to mix things up and see, you never know who's going to spark up and who's going to get things going for him as that ball misses outside. You know, we mentioned it at the start of the first game today, but the Stars are playing without their lead hitter, Grayson Downing. We haven't seen him at all today. So really they, they've been trying to figure out who's going to step up and, and make those plays. And they've had some really solid hitters today, but looking to, to find a new spark here in the top of the seventh and see if they can't get themselves back in this game. I mean, so far, at least with 
the last two that they've had, they're on base right now. So I think it's at least working in their favor to try and mix it up. As that one is in there for strike three, David Gutierrez doing his job on the mound. And that's going to bring up Gabe McCall. Strike that. We are going to get yet another pinch hitter. Number 30, Aiden Groberski. He's only appeared in one game so far this year, and it was just to pinch run. So this is going to be his first at-bat this season as he's hit with the first pitch that he sees. So we've got bases loaded now. One out here. Two outs now, excuse me. As... Partridge is going to be our first regularly scheduled batter in this inning. First baseman number 18, Matthew Partridge. Cougars one out away now as Gutierrez sends that one in there for ball one. Partridge so far today is 0 for 3 with two strikeouts, so he's still chasing after that first hit of the day, and this is a great moment for him right now with the bases loaded. Gutierrez delivers strike one. Cougars trying to get out of this. Bases loaded, two outs situation. The Stars looking to do what the Cougars did in the last inning and capitalize on a two out bases loaded situation. Gutierrez now in a situation where he's really got to work through this. Getting that strikeout was huge, and now with two outs, he gets another swinging strike. But as he's – we've got twos all the way across the board. It's going to be up to him whether or not they're going to get out of this – Inning completely unscathed. Gutierrez gets set, delivers the pitch just outside. Makes this a full count now. Cougar faithful getting loud and proud out here in River Forest. Gutierrez one strike away. Ball four. So that's going to bring Zap in, bring the Stars up to four runs on the day. Cougars still lead 18 to four. As that one's in there for strike one. Galvin so far. This is going to be his first at bat of this game specifically, but he was in game one. So we'll see how he can transfer that over now that he's had some time on the bench and now coming back in for this at bat. So a 1 1 count now, two outs, bases loaded. You know, the Cougars kind of kind of opened the doors on this game in the last inning and really took charge, but thinking about how many times we've seen. Bases loaded, and how many times we've seen two outs, bases loaded. I mean, baseball is so fun to watch when you get to just get some exciting things like this, and it's not very often that you see the games continue to play this deep with two outs, bases loaded situations so consistently. And, you know, head coach Colin Connor, he mentioned it in his Coaches Weekly last week that, you know, baseball, it, it's a kid's game, and it's supposed to be fun. And when you get things like this where – this is just good baseball to watch and to see and to see people, so many people making these things happen that it makes it fun. And there it is, David Gutierrez with the strike out to win the game. Cougars ending the day with the Division Street sweep. It does not get better than that, PL. I mean, what an incredible day from the offense alone out of the Cougars. It's just been Amazing to watch and an 18 to 4 win to boo. I mean, as former alumni, Kayla and I can say that it's always sweet to see a win over Dominican. So a great job on the day. And of course, for conference implications, it's huge for them to get those wins over Dominican today. Absolutely. I mean, and these are two massive wins. The Cougars coming into today one and one in conference and walking away three and one in conference it's a it's a great way to start conference play coming off of a huge win yesterday versus Wheaton in some non-conference and then picking up two really solid team wins today it's a fantastic way that you want to end things today as we get the final stat lines here we're going to be getting a post-game interview 
here on the Cougar Sports Network. But Cougars, a dominating fashion, a seven inning win. Cougars win 18 to four. Cougars 13 hits, three errors compared to the Dominicans, eight hits, three errors. I mean, we've been talking a lot about how the offense had a huge implication on this game, absolutely. I mean, 18 runs in the second game alone. But I think that the Cougars pitching staff, the night shift, really came out and showed that they don't have to be a one-man team, a three-man team. They've got a whole night shift to work with, and they really utilized that and were able to throw off the stars at every single point in time from being down as far as they were in game one then winning that game and then coming back in this game and just absolutely demolishing. So huge, huge things from the Cougars overall. Absolutely. So hang tight here as we wait for the post-game interview. Head coach Colin Connor, or sometimes he'll send a surprise player up, and we never really know until we see him coming up. So stay tuned to see who Co Coach Connor sends up here for a post-game interview. But we will have one here on the Cougar Sports Network. Hey, Cougar fans, I'm joined here by CUC third baseman Tyler Crater. Crater, congratulations on a Division Street sweep, first of all. But let's jump into it a little bit. You guys played an all-around game today, lit up by a highlight of home runs. First of all, yourself, a handful of home runs yourself. How did that feel? Felt great. Felt, felt good to sweep them. It yeah, felt great. Absolutely. And, I mean, the home runs were not limited today. You guys were doing a great job. Staying in things, you guys were battling through two out situations. How do you guys practice those two out situations where you guys saw a bulk of your scoring coming when you guys were already sitting with two outs? Do you guys work on things like that or how do you guys manage playing through being in that situation? You know, our, our approach is basically just stay aggressive. Uh, it doesn't matter if there's one out or two outs, we just try and stay aggressive and just try and get something going. Yeah, absolutely. And then on top of that, you guys have some really strong pitchers. You saw a plethora of guys step up in that first game. You saw, as they like to call themselves, the night shift kind of step in, yeah. going a couple innings here and there. Anthony Polano picking up 
taking a huge brunt of the game in three innings. That's a, a new record for him going that much. How How is it for you guys knowing that you've got so many arms and such strong pitchers that can go the distance and make that work for you guys? Yeah, it feels great, that night shift. They, they really got it down. Uh, it feels good out in the field, you know, knowing that we have so many arms that can pump it in the zone. So it just it feels great as defensively and offensively. Yeah, absolutely. What was the what was the energy of the dugout like after you guys were down in that first game? You gave up ten runs in the first two innings to Dominican, and then what was the energy like there? And then how did that shift to being able to come back the way that you guys did? Uh, we basically just you know came together and just told ourselves that we just got to start swinging it and something will happen. So that's what we did. Yeah, absolutely. We were talking about it on the broadcast that you guys really did a great job of next man up, base hit after base hit after base hit to give it to the next guy, and you guys were able to work around and being able to, to collect the hits that you guys did, and especially yourself picking up a pair of home runs on the day, going going long, looking out for those cars on Division Street, uh, being able to overcome that, that difference. How are you guys going to take the wins that you had today, tack on the win that you guys had last night, and then use that moving forward. You know, we just we just gotta take it day by day. Um, we just gotta turn the page and just take this momentum toward the next few games here in the, this weekend. So we're looking Absolutely. forward to it. Absolutely. Well, Cougar fans, it was a very entertaining day of baseball here in River Forest. Cougars now sit three and one in conference after two monstrous games against Dominican, picking up the Division Street sweep. All things CUC baseball can be found at cucougars.com as these guys head forward into the weekend as they hit the road to take on some more conference action. You're not going to want to miss it as these guys are on a hot streak, swinging the bats, big numbers coming their way. So head to cucougars.com for more coverage and all information on CUC baseball and be sure to be on the lookout for them next weekend. Tyler, congratulations again on Thank the Division you. Street sweep and we look forward to seeing what you guys can do this weekend. Thank you. Let's go Cougs. Go Cougs. Thank you so much for tuning in to today's Concordia University Chicago Cougars Athletics broadcast. We hope to see you on campus very soon. If you would like to learn more about what Concordia Chicago has to offer, go to cuchicago.edu.